and yet another Kuma Express. They head down south early in the morning. That gets them to Solomon's at night, allowing to afloat safely, and then back, getting here at night. Except this one didn't look like a train at all. If anything, it looked like a swarm on a move, or as if they were searching for something. I took the hint and decided we needed another grand tour of Bukenville and Buka. Let things settle down a bit in the meanwhile. We found the merchant escorted by three small destroyers. When reported, we were told someone else would be vectored here. But it's our patrol area. I will attack anyways. With three destroyers, it has to be valuable. The merchant was a sitting duck, and our torpedoes dots. I guess the HQ got its wish after all. We are about to finish the Grand Tour, but found nothing more than that merchant in Buka Passage, and plenty of air cover. A storm is brewing, let's see whether it turns off Japanese from running a convoy. Edwards detected the convoy heading keeps and not zigzagging at all. We can't see anything, but it means they can't see us either. We will go deck a wash, so we can use both radar and hydrophones. Edwards will call his hydrophone bearings, and I will fire the torpedoes at the right time. I really need to split the Edwards brothers to different watches. It gets very confusing when one is on the radar and the other one on sonar. Torpedo hit, except we don't know whether magnetic or a contact. Oh well. The hit ship slowed down a lot. We'll see what happens. In this storm, even the relatively light damage should turn fatal. But we are still no wiser to what works and what doesn't with MK14s. About half of our torpedoes on either setting were duds. So I'll continue shooting one contact and one magnetic. Edward says he heard breaking up sounds and explosions. We sunk it. Except we have no idea what. Let's hope our intelligence boys can tell us when we get back. <laughs> 